Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining me today. Let's go ahead and get your teams under control. So Microsoft Teams is a great asset for every organization. However, it becomes quickly overwhelming. Uh, the more and more teams you get, and if any user can create a team, the issue becomes, how do you manage all those teams? And this can become a very big issue, especially if your organization were to get audited and the auditor wants to see one of the SharePoint sites or one of the teams that you don't have access to as an admin, it becomes very troublesome and throws some red flags. So as a result of this, I've decided to create a Power Automate flow to help lock down teams and uh, help streamline and automate that process. I've also left chapters down below so it's easy to follow along so you can feel free to skip forward and back however you would like. If you find this video useful, please hit that like button and subscribe so I can continue making videos like these. Enjoy. So what we want to do is we want to create a team service account. This will act as a connector between Power Automate and Teams. Uh, this is going to be what's going to actually create the team and has uh, permission to do so. Uh, we want to restrict the amount of people that can actually create a team. So this team service account will serve that purpose. All right, now what we're going to want to do is actually create a security group. So I'm over here in the uh, active group staff. Let's go ahead and click add a group and select security group. And we're going to go ahead and call this the Teams Security Group. People who can create teams. All right, and then we're going to click Next. Everything looks good. Create group. Now that we have the group created, let's go ahead and click on the Team Security Group. Now let's go ahead and add the owner. It's going to add the Teams Security Group or a service account sorry and they're added the next thing we're going to need to do is actually run a powershell command uh, this is going to be found on the microsoft documentation website i've also linked it down below but basically when you come to the site you can scroll a little bit down here it has all the instructions on exactly what to do and what each thing means but this is the actual powershell script right here so what you're going to want to do on your machine is actually open up windows ise in administrator mode and then from there, uh, you can go ahead and paste the script right in here. And you can see here, I changed out the group name to the name of the group that we just created. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do import module uh, Azure AD preview. And I'll leave it down in the description as well. But basically this will import the modules required for uh, running the script. All right, now that those are in, we're just gonna copy all of this and paste it then hit enter. And as you can see here, it successfully ran. Uh, if you ran into any authorization uh, issues, that means the account that you're using does not have the appropriate permissions. So ensure that you're using an account that has Azure permissions to actually make the modification. Jumping back into Teams now with a different user account, you can see that the user doesn't have access to actually create a team. Uh, they can only join it using a code or if someone were to invite them. All right, so now that all that's set up, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna actually try to automate this process. So the first thing you're gonna need is a site. So we can just create a site. Uh, let's call it, you know, proposals. Uh, we can give it a site owner. Um, let's go ahead and do our SharePoint account. And yeah, finish. Now that we have our site set up, let's go ahead and we're gonna wanna create a new list. And I'm just gonna do a blank list and we'll call this Teams Request. And then create. We're gonna need to add some columns. Uh, this is gonna be used in Power Automate. We have the title field, the URL, alias, site owner, and justification. Uh, these will come into play once we're actually in Power Automate making the flow. Now that we're in the flow, the first thing we're gonna need to do is select the site address. So here we're gonna use a proposal site and we're gonna choose the list, the team's request list. Then click new step. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to compose and we're gonna take the trigger output of the alias and we're gonna do the same thing for the title. And it's good practice, you always wanna name your actual actions um, with something that makes sense to you. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna update the list item uh, so go ahead and click update item and then what we're going to do is select the proper site address and the list name for id just when an item is created select the id for title um, i actually have an expression i'm going to go ahead and put it down below uh, but right here we're basically replacing the outputs of the composed title right here um, so you can adjust this as needed 
But basically what we're doing is we're replacing spaces with no spaces. All right, let's do okay. For, we're gonna do the same thing for the alias. And here, I'm just gonna put alias. Okay, and we're all set for that. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up uh, the approval process. So I'll just say, uh, you know, start and wait for an approval. Uh, from here, choose the approval type that best fits your need. Uh, I'm just gonna do first to respond. For a subject, usually I'll do something like this. I'll say like created by, um, make sure you use when the item is created so you have the most relevant information. We're gonna use display name is requesting a new team. For assigned to, you just put the email address of whomever it is, or if it's a shared mailbox, you can do that as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the teams. See what comes up, all right. And for details, this is gonna be the body of the email. So you can say something like created by uh, display name is requesting a new team titled, and then we're gonna add the title here. And you can customize this as you like. Um, I just gonna do this as uh, just for reference. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put the justification and then we're gonna pull the justification from the original when an item was created. The next step in the process is we're gonna go ahead and put in a condition. And for the condition, we're gonna go ahead and take the actual outcome. So let's go ahead and type outcome so we can find it. Of the approval is equal to approve. And what this is basically gonna do is it's going to look for the outcome of the start and wait for an approval. And then it's gonna look for if it's approved. If it's approved, it'll go yes. If it's not approved, it'll go no. All right, so let's start on the, if it's disapproved. What we're gonna do is we're gonna send an email and we're gonna send it to the person who created it. So we're actually gonna do dynamic content, created by, um, we're gonna choose the created by email within the, when an item is created. For subject, you could just say your team's request was denied. And then in the body, you could put whatever you'd like. Uh, we'll just say, you know, your request was denied for the reason below. And then what you can do here is you could take the comments from the uh, approver. So you could take the response comments. It's gonna do an apply to each simply because there are multiple people who could leave comments, but right here, don't worry about that, that's done. And then if you want, you can add a terminate and you can just say canceled. And that's done with that. Once an item is approved, we're gonna create team. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and put for the team name, we're gonna use the title from the update item. So that way there's no spaces. Or you can even use spaces if you like. I just have a preference for doing that, then we can always change it later. Um, and then for the description, we're gonna go ahead and grab the description from when an item was created. And here you can actually change the visibility. Do you want it to be a public team, private team, et cetera? Uh, that's all on personal preference. Um, you know, whatever your organization works with, you can choose that, but you know, I'll just choose private. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the team. And we're gonna do this so that we can capture the data from there. So from add a team, what you can do is do custom value and then new team ID. Now the next step we're gonna do here is we're gonna update the item again. However, for this update item, uh, we're really only gonna change or add, shall I say, is the URL. So I'll go ahead and put my URL there and then I'm gonna go ahead and add the new title. Uh, this is just more for record keeping. So when you go to that list, you know exactly where the SharePoint site that was created is. Uh, so that's gonna be right there. This next part is optional, but if you wanna join your newly created team's SharePoint site to a hub, you can do that by using the join hub site action and what this will do is it'll basically prompt you for your requesting site address and the hub site id the hub site id you can find very easily uh, by running a simple pmp powershell script i'll go ahead and post that down in the description uh, you for the requesting site you would basically put your site's url forward slash sites forward slash and you would put the title all right let's go ahead and assign some permissions to the team uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a list of group members from an office 365 group uh, this could be your SharePoint admins or your global admins or whomever, whatever 365 group you have set up. Uh, you can go ahead and add that in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a member. 
And uh, this is basically going to add a member to the team. Uh, so for the team, we're actually going to do a custom value. And then in the search, go ahead and type in team ID. You'll see it right here pop up from get a team. It's essentially pulling the team info from here. And then for uh, adding a user, we're going to use a user's principal name. And it's going to create an apply to each loop. And uh, essentially what that's doing is it's going to add each team member within that group for the list group members to the new team that was created. Also, if you would like, uh, if you expand the add a member to a team and show advanced options, uh, you can choose whether or not you want them to be a owner of the team. Uh, I'm going to say yes, because it's going to be an admin group. Let's say you want to make sure that all your global admins, teams admins, whomever have access. That's where you would do it. And then we also want to add the person who's a site owner to the actual team. So what we're going to do is going to do add a member again. And we're going to select the team just like we did before custom value. Team ID for the user ID, though, we're going to do the site owner email. And finally, we want to go ahead and notify the individual that had requested the team that their team has been created. So we're going to go ahead and send an email. And for send an email uh, for the two, we're actually going to do dynamic content created by email. And we're going to take that from when the item was created uh, for a subject. You could put whatever you like. You could say, you know, your team has been created or whatever you would like uh, for body. You could say the same thing. Congrats. Um, you can say, you know, usually what I like to put in there is the URL of the site. So that way they have it handy. Uh, for show advanced options, um, I would actually put in the CC field, usually I tend to put the site owner. So you can use the site owner email using the dynamic content, but that's pretty much it. I mean, after that, you're, you know, pretty much done. So let's go ahead and run a test on this real quick to make sure it works. We're going to click test. We're going to do a manual trigger. And for a new item, uh, we can go ahead and enter in, let's say, testing one, two, three for alias. Again, this is just for record keeping. You don't need an alias. This is what I do sometimes because some cro some clients have really long names and we kind of break the names down into a acronym. Um, for the site owner, let's go ahead and add the SharePoint services site owner, justification, and the description. And keep in mind, you don't have to use a SharePoint list. You could use Microsoft Forms, you could use Power Apps, or you can even make this SharePoint you know, list form the way it looks. You can modify it so that some of these fields are hidden using uh, Power Apps. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit save. And let's see our trigger, our flow get triggered. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button and subscribe as it does help the channel out. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section. Have a great day.